Family. It's your favorite queer radio personality, Anna Deshaun, with our queer news for today. Now, I want to make you a promise. We will continue to bring you the latest in queer news, culture, and politics every Monday by 7 a.m. Chicago time. So, if you're digging our intersectional take on the weekly, consider joining the Q Crew. The Q Crew is our monthly membership program we started to help grow this podcast. You get weekly emails from me, exclusive interviews with LGBTQ influencers from across the country, and beginning this year, special behind the scenes footage too. With your support, we can bring you more stories celebrating our lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, and comrade communities. Click the link in the show notes, okay, to join the Q Crew today. Now for the news. Angelica Ross leads an action during the closing plenary of the Creating Change Conference on behalf of the trans, gender non-conforming, and intersex communities in attendance. A bill in Tennessee is off to the governor's desk to actually ban drag shows, y'all. And in West Virginia, MMA fighters volunteer to actually protect patrons of a drag show. In entertainment, the brat and Judy are pregnant. And a few top queer highlights from the NAACP Image Awards. There's a lot today, so let's get into it. Let's go. Family. Black people in the South make up 38% of the population, but 52% of all new HIV infections. So why aren't we talking about it? I'm Anna Deshaun, your favorite queer radio personality. My co-host, Dwayne Kramer, and I will explore the shame, the stigma, and the solutions. This is Black HIV in the South. How did we get here? Tune in on The Cube or wherever you get your podcasts. Are you lost in your podcast journey? If so, you found the right podcast. My name is DJ Tracy Treese, and I'm a podcast producer. In partnership with The Cube, I'm bringing you the Lost and Found for Podcasters. I've worked behind the scenes on some of your favorite podcasts, and I'll be bringing you some great conversations with podcast industry experts to help you find your way through your podcast journey. There's so much information out there, and the industry is rapidly changing. No need to feel lost. You found the right podcast. Subscribe to the Lost and Found for Podcasters now. Everywhere that you listen to podcasts, if you prefer your podcast and video, click the link in the description to subscribe to this podcast on YouTube. You are now tuned in to higher frequencies. We do this frequently. Turn your radio station to E3 for that decency. Listen to great music and the latest movement. Safe listening for anyone that's tuned in. Who you waking up to? Anna Deshaun, Q Crew and Friends. It's that real talk. All live radio with the spins. You caught up in traffic, frustrated. Just check in with E3 to shift your vibrations and get elevated. That's queer radio done right. Choose to be yourself. That's the only way to live life. And that's how it's done here. Family, you know, last week I talked all about the Creating Change Conference. I had a beautiful time connecting and reconnecting with brilliant LGBTQ leaders from across the country and the world, really. Now, if you remember, I spoke of all the ways Creating Change is a special place. There's literally no place like it. It is a gathering of people from across the country and the world who, at some level, care about the liberation of queer folks. What's also very special, and simply just the reality, is that we don't all agree on how we get to this liberation. There are protests here and actions. There are impromptu call-ins when people are harmed. There are disruptions. Creating Change 2023 was no different. I'd heard over the course of the conference that our trans siblings weren't pleased with a number of aspects that affected them. So during the conference, they went to work and formed the 2023 Creating Change Trans Action Collective. This collective prepared demands and strategized on the best way to communicate their concerns. Well, Angelica Ross was slated to speak on the closing plenary and they asked her to lead the action. And of course she said, yes, honestly, I've known Angelica for over a decade and I've never seen her back down from such a moment or fight, okay? So she did what she does best. She advocated. She used her platform to speak the demands of the community. 
Angelica invited all of the trans, gender non-conforming, and intersex fam to the stage, and it was a beautiful sight to see. Nearly a hundred of our trans siblings standing in solidarity, taking over the closing plenary, okay, from the executive director, <laughs> and speaking up for themselves, speaking their truth. I will be posting portions of the video this week just so you can see how beautiful it was. Family, standing up for yourself is never easy, especially not when it's with family, and creating change is family. Honestly, how many of us turn the other cheek when it comes to family? We don't want to ruffle any feathers or deal with the fallout, but that really doesn't do anything for our collective liberation, does it? It doesn't really create the change we want to see. Angelica started by saying, we aren't creating the change we need to make yet. Now, I want to share a small portion of what the collective had to say. The action actually took about 26 minutes. I have 26 minutes worth of footage, but I didn't want to put all 26 minutes on this podcast. I do want to include portions that I think are really important for you to hear and take away. Things that stood out to me were just how thoughtful the demands are and also how Angelica called in the Creating Change leadership and also recognized that we ought not put this on the head of the first Black executive director of Creating Change, Kiara Johnson, but rather this is a system, right? And there's lots of accountability to go around. Yeah, take a listen, family. Again, work while they're coming in. Formed over the weekend at this very conference in direct response to the ongoing exclusion and erasure of trans, non binary, and intersex people in this space. Yeah. On the 50th anniversary of the National LGBTQ Task Force, it is clear that the organization is still being run through the historically exclusionary paradigm that centers cisgender and white LGBTQ people and their community needs and concerns. This doesn't even include the reality that at this conference, the sole day-long trans institute was confined to a small meeting space that could not even hope to contain our brilliance. Despite the disregard for our communities, we continue to show up because as our beloved transcestor Sylvia Rivera said, we have to be visible. We have to show the world that we are numerous. from the inherent wisdom that we bring with our presence. So now, we, we all call upon the cis folks in this room. Do you love us enough to be angry with us? So we're not asking. These are not asks. These are demands. Restitution and equity. Some of you might be wondering what that looked like. Equity and restitution looks like the LGBTQ task force taking accountability for the gender based harassment and lack of cultural competency of the hotel staff at this year's gathering. We demand an apology for these experiences and the commitment to conduct future conferences at culturally competent spaces with regards to race, ability, culture, gender, 
ever is providing him to training to the staff that are going to be here, preparing the space. Equity and restitution looks like ensuring that future creating change conferences have a clear system for participants to identify and address instances of harassment and discrimination that future plenary sessions reflect and address the realities of local and national black, brown, indigenous, migrant, disabled, neurodiverse, TGI communities, and the LGBTQ task force is intentional about geographic representation, especially with regards to representation from local communities in the South. Creating Change Conference. strategize on how to mend the relationship between the task force and the TGI community. To assure that Trans Action Collective doesn't continue providing unpaid and tiring labor on behalf of the task force, this planning work will include a generous compensation. who work in tirelessly effort every year to help create a conference, they rarely have the time to attend because of their roles. Equity and restitution looks like LGBTQ task force committee to unlearning ableism. to convene a space to connect attendee organizations with funders and provide free one-on-one guide, free one-on-one guidance on grant writing for less resource trans organizations by the Indigenous, Latinx, POC, disabled, neurodivergent, immigrant, undocumented, sex workers. Because some 
of y'all ver verbalize how you tired of all these new pro uh, pronouns and labels. Baby, baby, you gonna stay tired. <laughs> Create change. Yes, we do. Our next story is coming out of Tennessee, where this state's legislators are choosing to continue the anti-trans and anti-LGBTQ movement of the last couple of years by passing a bill that would actually, y'all, ban drag shows in public. We all know drag typically takes place inside of a bar, but what about the gay pride parade or drag story hour? What is a gay pride parade without the queens? I think Lynn Purvis, a Tennessee courts administrator who has sometimes done drag, said it best when they testified in opposition to this bill at a committee hearing. They said, seeing a drag queen doesn't make a kid gay or trans, 
but it can help queer kids who are suffering so that there's hope of being able to one day freely express themselves. Period. With a T. You know what I'm saying? Seeing all the straights on TV surely has not made me straight. So I just don't know how it works the other way. All right, it doesn't. Y'all, this bill is off to the governor's desk for signature. We're in need of some uplifting news, right? <laughs> now this uplifting news is coming out of West Virginia. An MMA coach and his fighters are standing up against bullies who forced a production company to actually cancel a nearly sold out drag brunch because of threats made against the venue, performers, and patrons. This MMA coach, Johnny, reposted the cancellation notice on his Facebook page and said, I volunteer me and a couple of my fighters to work security if Primanti Brothers decides to reschedule their drag brunch. I'm sure we can make sure the event stays safe. That post took off and gave supporters a place to voice their solidarity. Oh, but where there is LGBTQ solidarity, there will be hate. So even Johnny has received some threats as well, but he's not deterred. He told LGBTQ Nation, I've been a minority in this state. Progressive minds are a minority in this state. That's what I thought. But the response to his offer, he says, has shown him a different side of this community. Quote, showing that this small group of people can't bully people into stopping is a beacon of light for our valley. Now, family, y'all know I love sharing stories like this because we do have power when we come together and use it. So often we forget, so often the world runs us down and we get tired, right? But stories like this reminds us that we have allies in this fight with us. We never know when they're gonna show up. We never know who it's gonna be. But when they decide to stand up with us, there's a collective power that hate cannot stop. It started with just one, and now if they decide to hold the drag show, they've got some protectors ready to support. I love it. Love it. In entertainment news, DeBrat has revealed her baby bump. I could not be happier for her and Judy. They got married last year and began this journey to have a baby. Something the brat said she never thought was in the cards for her. During the baby making journey, Judy had major health complications following her egg retrieval procedure. Then Brad had to undergo surgery to remove fibroids and polyps prior to her embryo transfer. Then Brad had a miscarriage. Yeah, the journey to motherhood can be really tough sometimes and it can really feel impossible. This goes for the gays, this goes for the straights, child, this goes for anyone looking to be a parent. And motherhood does not discriminate in any way, but they didn't give up. Now Brad is five months pregnant with an exclusive spread in People Magazine. I will say, I love the reveal on the Sherry Shepherd show as well. The pure excitement on Sherry's face it's a joy many queer folks just don't get. It made my heart smile. Brett and Judy, we are sending you so much love from the Queer News Podcast. We hope you continue to grow your family. In just a little bit more entertainment news, Saturday night, the NAACP Image Awards were live and so many queer folks got their flowers. The Queen was hosting and singing. Zaya Wade's parents received the President's Award for their tireless advocacy of Zaya's rights. I mean, I have truly gained so much respect for Gabrielle Union and Dwayne Wade over the last three, four years or so in some of the most impossible circumstances, being some of the most well-known celebrities in Hollywood and athletics, they have tackled one of the most challenging situations in public anyone has ever had to deal with. 
and they have done it with such amazing grace while preserving Zaya's innocence as much as they possibly can. I got mad love for them, period. Then there is Nico Annan, who won Outstanding Actor in a Drama Series for his role on P-Valley. Now for the word today, I wanna leave you with his acceptance speech because there are some gems in here that I believe will encourage you throughout this upcoming week. Till next week, family. Peace. I want to dedicate this to every 40, 50, 60, 70 year old plus that did not have space to be themselves. I want to thank each and every one of you that are here tonight watching at home but that are dining at this table, this family table where we can have conversations. And it was told to me one time, may you dine at the tables that you build with dreams too brave to be broken, with cups and plates that runneth over. Those are the words of Katori Hall. And I thank that woman for this opportunity and creating a space that we can look at our cousins and sisters and brothers with love, dignity, and respect as they fly through the ceiling. Thank you to my team. Thank you, Mama, Daddy, for loving this black boy right here. And thank you for loving this. If you enjoyed what you hear, rate and review us inside your favorite podcasting app. This podcast is a production of E3 Radio, your number one queer radio station playing queer music and reporting on queer news in high rotation.